The new development bank known as BRICS Bank is celebrating eight years since its launch. As the bank celebrates this milestone, the vice president um, of the bank, uh, Leslie Mastorf, says the bank had to navigate difficult times during COVID-19 and the impact of the war in Ukraine. Our SABC News International editor Sophie Mukwena spoke to Leslie a bit earlier on. The um, bank um, operates in uh, US uh, dollars and therefore the bank has to be fully compliant with uh, international restrictions that exist with respect to deployment of uh, dollars to sanctioned uh, entities. So the new development bank, like all other multilateral banks like Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, the World Bank and so on, we all observe the relevant international uh, restrictions. Um, so, in 2022, the bank had uh, initially experienced some funding challenges, but we have largely overcome that. Now, in 2023, beginning of this year, the bank was able to have its international credit rating affirmed as a AA plus uh, with Standard & Poor. And we also had the negative outlook with Fitch put in place last year. We had that uh, um, changed uh, upwards towards uh, stable. And then also in April this year, a few months ago, the bank was able to raise a green bond, $1.25 billion of new funding that will be utilized for new green projects throughout the uh, member uh, countries. And then finally, uh, also a few weeks ago, the bank raised 8.5 billion renminbi here in the Chinese uh, bank uh, bond uh, market, uh, which that is roughly about $1.3 billion. So we are now back in uh, full so the fundraising uh, mode. So the challenges of 2022 have largely been uh, dealt with. Is the bank looking at this debate that is raging on in terms of uh, how you deal with the dollar as a trading currency? I think it's important to highlight that the uh, bank's uh, currency in which we operate, our capital that we receive from our member countries is in dollars. About 70% of our loans that we do are in uh, dollars. And the bank has a commitment. Since 2015, we've had this commitment to increase the use of our local currencies of our member uh, countries. So here in China already, we do almost half of our projects in uh, renminbi, meaning we, we raise renminbi in the bond market, which is the local currency, and then we on lend in uh, that currency. We are on the verge now of finalizing a program that we will list on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, where we will raise in the next few weeks a, a bond in RAND in South Africa. And we will use the proceeds of those the RANDs to deploy on the projects uh, that we have in uh, South Africa. One of the projects, for example, that's denominated in local currency in RAND is the Lesotho Highlands Water Project Phase 2 that we have um, uh, approved and that we are in the process of, uh, that we will be dispersing on. So uh, the bank is committed to deploy more local currency financing uh, going uh, forward. At some stage in future, as you know, our shareholders at the level of, of the um, uh, BRICS countries um, are discussing the approach for uh, the future because a number of countries at their level, they are starting to trade also in their local currencies. But as far as the bank is concerned, we will be continuing to lend in US dollars and also in South African rand, in Brazilian real, in Indian rupee, uh, uh, Chinese renminbi, and so on. There is interest from other countries to join the bank. Can you briefly tell us, as we speak now, how many countries are part of this institution? It's important to highlight, Sophie, that uh, way back in 2014, when the articles of agreement of the bank were signed, it was always the intention of the shareholders for us to create a global bank anchored in the emerging markets. So over the last number of years, we put in place all the enabling uh, policies and procedures to be able to start the membership expansion. Uh, during the COVID period um, in 2021, uh, we had already a number of countries join. Egypt, as you know, have joined the, the bank. United Arab Emirates have joined the bank. Bangladesh is now a shareholder. Uruguay is in the process of joining. And you would have seen in the public domain that Saudi Arabia have also expressed interest. There's a large number of emerging markets that are interested in joining the uh, bank because the bank is an additional source of financing 
for infrastructure. Many of these countries are already members of the World Bank, they're members of African Development Bank, they're mem members of Asia Development Bank, Inter-American Development Bank, and so on. So we are just an additional source of financing because we are very strong green uh, institution committed to help our countries with the green transition. And many of these countries have a need and a, and, and a gap in terms of financing for, uh, for uh, in, in infra infrastructure. So in the next number of years, the process of membership expansion is going to continue and going to accelerate. In fact, the new president of the bank, President Dilma Rousseff, has already indicated that this will be one of the strong strategic priorities that she will devote a lot of uh, attention to. So we are very confident that over the next um, uh, year, two, three, we will see more and more uh, countries join uh, our bank, which also, as you know, will have the strong positive impact that it will bring in new fresh capital for, for the institution. South Africa will be hosting the BRICS summit. What can we expect from the bank in terms of PEPs announcements going forward, projects that you intend to support in different parts of the world or PEPs within your member countries? I think with regards to the uh, bank and its involvement in the uh, BRICS uh, summit, we will certainly showcase the work that we are doing and have been doing in uh, South Africa. Our aim is to strengthen our pipeline of projects in uh, South Africa. South Africa, as you know, uh, because of the uh, slow growth uh, trajectory, has the government has a strong commitment to invest in infrastructure to enhance the productive capacity of the economy. So whether it's investment in new rail and upgrading of our rail infrastructure, investment in new uh, energy, investment in the road infrastructure, investment in water, in all of these areas I've just mentioned, the bank is uh, active in, whether it be with Sunrail, with TCTA, with ESCOM, with Transnet and uh, so on. So we will try to give prominence to um, the work we are doing in all of those uh, sectors during the, uh, the BRICS Summit.